Hi, good evening everybody. This is Clive Forrester from Jamaican Secular Humanism bringing you yet another episode of Skeptically Speaking. And today we're actually pretty on time, you know, just one minute um, yes. compared to the previous episodes. All right, all right. So sometimes we're late, but we're actually uh, fairly early today. Today's episode, Challenging the anti booger Law in Belize, Part 2. If you remember from the last episode, we had two Belizeans, uh, Paul Schmidt and Mary Martin, who kind of gave us uh, uh, more or less a, a, a fairly good description of the kind of climate which exists in Belize as it relates to the particular Supreme Court challenge where um, Caleb Orozco was the main litigant in a, a court case to repeal or to, to challenge the anti the constitutionality. Mm -hmm. The constitutionality of the anti bogger law in mm -hmm. uh, Belize. And we had those two Belizeans on. And today we have with us Lisa Showman, who is the uh, lawyer, one of the main attorneys for Caleb Orozco, who is the litigant in that particular case. And Hilary, could you just fill us in on some of the, the legal specifics of this case? What, what, yes. Refresh our memory. Yes, yes, I certainly will. But first of all, let me welcome um, Lisa Showman. Um, she wears many hats, including that of my sister. Um, so I will apologize. Full disclosure. I full disclosure. <laughs> so I, I I apologize in advance um, if I'm not if I don't appear sufficiently impartial in my in my treatment. Um, but um, yeah, you know, say so you rough me up all the time. Oh, ah, yeah. that's as, as, as your as your as your as your brother, yes, but that's to be expected. <laughs> but Lisa, Lisa is indeed. Um, one of one well just by way of background lisa is certainly one of one of belize's um most prominent lawyers certainly one of the one of the most prominent female lawyers i mean i don't mind boasting that my sister was the first female president of the Jamaica, of the belize bar association um before age 30. um she Whoa. has had a, a distinguished track record um, not just in the law, but um, in diplomacy as well. Um, she was previously served as ambassador of Belize to the Organization of American States to the United States, and at one point in time, High Commissioner to Canada. Um, she is. Um, she is this, is. this is me smiling modestly, but it's going on too long. Wait, <laughs> man. Wait, no, man. So anyway, anyway, but she's a human rights. She's a human rights. Um, warrior, and that has That's brought her like. into br brought her into being one of the lead counsel in this recently concluded litigation um, in Belize, where Section 53 of Belize's Criminal Code was being challenged, and that's the part that is um, that criminalizes anal sex. To to put it simply, um, uh, Lisa was accompanied by a number of very prominent lawyers, some coming, many of them coming from outside Belize, which included Lord Goldsmith. Uh, let, 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 let's start with our lead attorney, because I think this is one of the things. Okay, let me, let me, let me, yes. yeah, man, go ahead. The Caribbean case. This is a yes. Belizean, first off, it is a Belizean case. Because yes. The case. Why there's been quite a bit of criticism stating that the case is some kind of a test case of the Caribbean. Yes. It's actually a Belizean case. Caleb oh, it is. Caleb Orozco and Unibam, quite a long time ago, had interest in challenging Section 53 of the Criminal Code. And they were lucky enough to link up with URAP, which is the University Rights Advocacy Project on the yes. WI. Okay. Yes. It was really that project that launched Caleb and Unibam into seriously looking into challenging Belize's Section 53 of the Criminal Code, which is really our unnatural crime provision. Yes. It actually goes quite a bit further than, than Bogre or anal sex explain in a minute. Yes. What, was, what, what is critical to know is that this Belizean NGO and Belizean activists approached Europe for help mm -hmm. and it was decided because of five years of fruitless lobbying to change the law, yes. it was actually decided then to litigate yes. as, as the only way to push this forward. 
Yes. Okay, okay, okay. May I say that although papers were filed in 2009, in fact, all the while up to just before court, lobbying was ongoing with the government of Belize to see in fact whether it would not have been possible to change the law without actually litigating the issue. Ah, okay. Could you, could you, could you, could you, could you for a second, uh, Lisa, could you, maybe for, for the benefit of our viewers, explain yeah. what is the difference between litigating an issue and changing the law? Right. Litigating the issue meaning going to court. Because what has been done in the Section 53 challenge is Section 53 has been held up alongside the Constitution of Belize. Okay. And so the criminal code is being challenged as not being in conformity, not not being in consonance with the Constitution yes. of Belize. Mm -hmm. And section, 50, section 2 of the Constitution of Belize says that if any other law is not consistent with the Constitution, to the extent of that inconsistency, then the other law is void. Right. So that is really the litigation challenge, asking the court to look at Section 53 of the Criminal Code and to see whether it conforms with or complies with the Constitution. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. However, okay. however during the five years previous to 2009, Caleb Orozco and Unibam had been talking to government, uh -huh. government agencies trying to get them to make changes to Section 53. Now, this is important to note because people will think that you just simply jump up and decide to take a case to court, not so. Mm. Right, right. Well, which, which is exactly why we want to get long into the background and history. It was a long period of time. Yes. So then, therefore, the University Rights Group and Caleb got in touch with me and asked whether I'd be willing to serve as local counsel. So I took this on as a private attorney, expecting only to be, don't laugh in air, expecting only to be a solicitor. Yeah. <laughs> now you have to explain to viewers what that means. Yes, what is that distinction? Why yeah. explain that? I was only supposed to be filing the papers. Good. Not a barrister. I my big mouth okay. about things. <laughs> yes. Not advocating, meaning okay. speaking so but, much. But, but, but with, with respect to um, senior counsel, you are not a solicitor type. You're not, you don't have the personality of a solicitor. You are a advocate. <laughs> you... you <laughs> So, but I really was only expecting to be a solicitor on this mm. thing. I really wanted to be a part of it because I thought it was an interesting legal point. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And but of course, you are speaking. Sorry, I just uh, yeah. you're you're speaking to us in your capacity as just a private attorney. A private attorney, and, and, and I need to make that very clear because I do have a public role in this country. Yeah. Yes. As a appointed senator on behalf of the opposition. I oh, do okay. not know. And for the rest of the program, I do not speak as a senator of the government of Belize. I speak as Lisa Schumann, private attorney. Okay, That's no really important to draw that distinction. Whatever, yes. whatever Noted. I express are my own and yes. have nothing to do with the political party to which I belong or by whom I was appointed. That's okay. my little disclaimer in. Oh, Boy, yes. I tell you, man, you know, this, this, this <laughs> is what you see, you see how fluent, you see, no, like, you know, just how fluent she is in rattling off a disclaimer that comes oh, yes. from almost 25 years at the bar. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so there I was, really only expecting, gentlemen, to be a solicitor to file papers because I felt it was an honor to be a part of this project, but also, too, um, I was not really involved in the struggle per se. So, mm. Okay, right, let me, let me get involved. And then politics and my, my, and my private life collided. Uh -huh. I actually chose to go and um, seek a constituency, not in Belize City, in one of the more, in one of the more uh, conservative areas in Belize, in terms uh -huh. certainly of faith and, and belief. And, uh -huh. and um, was invited on to a, a very prominent and prestigious television station, Plus TV, and was hammered, quite rightly so, because the media should do this, hammered by the horse as to why did I take on this case? Did I not think that this was the wrong thing for a politician to do? Yeah. 
what right gave me to get involved in something like this? This is, this is after all, um, not biblical, immoral. Yes. I really had to face, I think, what was for me a, 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 one of these pivotal moments in one's life. Do you do the expedient thing? Or do you do the principal thing? The right thing. Yes. And the right thing may be hard to figure out between those two clubs. So, and it's come at a cost. Really, I really thought about yeah. it. It's not mm. a cost I've ever regretted, Hilaire, and it's had its. I know. I know. I know. Um, I know. I really Lisa, are, are you a Christian, Lisa? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I, think, I think I probably am, but not in any conventional sense of. Okay. So was it a conflict of interest for your uh, religious well, beliefs? Not so much religious belief, no. I think the, the dilemma I had was here, here am I offering myself for public office yeah. to a community of people who are conservative, for the most part religious, for the most part Christian, and possibly quite conservative in terms of um, Christian faith at that. Mm -hmm. and if I was going to be their representative, did I not owe them the, the right to be represented by someone who reflected themselves? In okay. other words, is it enough for me to just talk the talk or do I have to walk the walk as well? Mm -hmm. and, and my thing was, I felt that I could both ethically represent this community mm -hmm. and yet still have my own distinct views. Mm -hmm. yes. As it turns out, I was not required to step up to that responsibility. So why why was it such an issue being uh, 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 you know because you 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 mentioned that when you did the interview you were more or less criticized for well, it was uh, a one hour show it was oh, wow. one hour show <laughs> yeah one, and it stretched into three wow oh my goodness plus I was kept in studio another hour by the host and 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 his and his Christian backer. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the question, which is fair, that's good, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to expect this if you're a public figure. I okay, believe okay. in free speech, I don't believe in censorship. Yeah. And so I felt that it was, it, they had the right. So is it that you're, the, the particular political party that you're attached to, is it that that, that party is against uh, changing this particular law? No, I would not say that. Okay. I would say the party mm. has taken a responsible position, which is that it is awaiting the outcome of the litigation. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. party, the party leader has said very clearly that there is room in the tent for all believers. Yeah. And yes. once we are talking about equality before the law and, and human rights, that absolutely has to be respected. Yes. But Lisa, share, share with us I mean, uh, your, your transition from solicitor to advocate. And so I mean, what's, was, what's the, the sort of... Genesis. That was the genesis of it, Hiller. Yes. I had to decide whether I was all in or not. Right, no, no, I'm talking about specifically, I mean, the litigation itself. I mean, one, in other words, you move from being... from well, as, as people became curious about mm. the litigation, as papers became filed, um, it was a year later in 2010 mm -hmm. that, in fact, the human rights interested parties applied to join Yes. Because for those who don't know, Clive, a constitutional challenge is always framed as being the claimant, in this case, Caleb Orozco, and the organization, Unibam, and the Attorney General of Belize. Yes. Now, some okay. people think, say, yes, sue government. <laughs> yes. But it's been said in Belize, yes. and seriously, yes. too, and by serious people at that. Yes. No, the case is framed that way because that is formally how it must be put. Yes. The Attorney General is the formal party who is cited in these cases because clearly the government must have a say. Yes. So yes. They, must, they must be guardians of the Constitution one way or another, or rather guardians of the law because it is the courts that are guardians of the Constitution. Right, right, right. What was the, what was the feeling of oh, continent? Yeah, no, no. What happened is that people really started to get interested and excited once the media got wind of this. Yes. And actually, it had to do with my candidacy. Okay. Mm. So okay. those who became rolled up, um, I ended up filing the papers. We ended up being forefronted in the media. Europe's attorneys 
were not here. The lead, mm. the lead team attorney is actually Christopher Hamill Smith from Trinidad. Yes. And we also have Professor Westman James, who lectures at UWE at um, Cave Hill. Okay. Who was here. And we also had another attorney from UWE, Dr. Arif Bulkan, who regrettably, mm -hmm. although he carried a great deal of the responsibility behind the scenes, couldn't come because he was dealing with the cross dressing case in Guyana. Uh -huh. And so he was a friend of interest. Yes. <laughs> this is, I want to make the point that, first of all, this is a Belizean case, uh -huh. but it is also eminently a Caribbean case. Oh, Definitely. Yes. In yes. fact, yes. Lisa, Before could you we pause? even get to Lord Peter Goldsmith and the human rights people, no, I understand. you want to make the case so people can understand? Yes. Is a Caribbean case. No, no, I understood. Understood. I mean, but what, what I wanted to. But what, what I wanted to say, well, before I get to that, could you, could you explain in simple terms for our, our viewers yes. um, the, 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 the steps, the, the different steps in litigation? I know, for example, there was a preliminary hearing presided over by Justice Michelle Arana. What, yeah, am I getting? Before, before you even get there, let's, let's break it down like this. Okay. It took, meeting, it took us about a year, actually, to file the papers. Yes. It were filed in late 2009. Yes. That is the claim form. That didn't come up for a first hearing until early 2010. 2010, right. I think it was in mid-2010 when the human rights interested parties, including mm -hmm. the Human Dignity Trust, mm -hmm. the International Commission of Tourists, mm -hmm. and one other, I'm sorry, it's slipping me, um, mm -hmm. asked, to, asked to join. Right. Asked to join the case. Now, this is where... Lord Peter Goldsmith comes in because ah, okay, he's okay. for Human Dignity Trust, okay. National Commission of Juries, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. and International Society of mm. Lawyers, I think. Right, intervening parties. Yes, they are what is called in Belize interested parties. Yes. Um, so, so I'm I'm guessing this might have been one of the reasons why, why Belizeans might have picked say, is a foreign people think this, you know, yes, all of these yeah, foreigners okay. start getting involved. Yeah. And then make it worse, right? When these people ask to join, <laughs> Human Dignity Trust has an awesome PR machine. Right. They reach into every British newspaper. <laughs> so you know that what happened is, once you get in at a British newspaper, they... Yes, oh, yes. yes. Pay attention, mm. and everybody start getting excited yeah. And that's when it picked up traction in the real, in the real quote-unquote media. Yes. And it started becoming interesting or sexy. Which yes. Is oh, yes. So Definitely after sexy. That, after, that, <laughs> after that, the churches took notice, and they decided they were going to apply to be interveners. Yes. Okay. But if I'm right. not mistaken in my timeline, that didn't happen until 2011. Uh -huh. Okay. They applied and they became. And three particular agrupations, the Catholic Church of Belize, yes. the Anglican Church of Belize, and the yes. Evangelical Association of Belize. Boy, oh. I tell you, all and the platoons came out, man. No, not all. This mm. is what is interesting, because I think these particular three, mm -hmm. I believe they speak on behalf of what is called the Council of Churches, which is the big umbrella organization in Belize. Mm -hmm. Okay. They actually don't. The Catholic Church speaks for the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. The Anglican Church speaks for the Anglican Church. And the Evangelical Association speaks for their grouping. Yes. So this they organization, the Muslims, they... They yeah. don't speak for the Muslims. Yes. They don't speak for other Christian groups. You're, 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 you're understanding me? Yes. Yeah. And they don't speak, for instance, for people who are Hindu, who subscribe to the Mennonite religion, right. who are, um, are non-believers of whatever stripe, mm -hmm. who believe in Maya religion, yeah. who believe in Garifuna right. religion and worship. So you're saying they were not representative of the Belize, um, the Belize faiths? I couldn't. I wouldn't say that, Hilaire. What I would say is they were representative of their own groupings. Right, but, uh, but what proportion of, in terms of demographics? That, I mean, that's, that's really hard to say. That's a hard to say. Really okay. To okay. Say. Okay. Probably, probably demographically, they would be a majority. Okay. 
But since I am not a fan of majority rule, you know how that goes. Me yes. neither. <laughs> no. I am not a fan of unbounded majority rule. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Me neither. Yeah. No, Lisa, so we were hoping to have Kayleigh about the program. And I, mean, and I think, unfortunately, well, Kayleigh might be traveling now. No, let me let me explain where he is because it is important. Okay. He wanted to be here, but Caleb is at the OAS General Assembly. Okay. The of okay. The states every year has a civil society forum at their annual general meeting, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it is important that especially LGBT people are representative and have a seat. Yeah. Caleb and Unibam have been attending these meetings now. I think for some maybe at least seven years. Mm, it's a long time. He takes it seriously. It is important. And right now, they are discussing trying to get a discrimination, a, an anti-discrimination charter off the ground. Okay. Yes. All right. Cool. It's important. So he sends his sincere apologies. No problem. No problem. And we can facilitate him another time. To get into these things, this is what happens. But I really think it would be good for Caleb to come on and tell his story. Also, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. From a human perspective, because I keep telling people, human story, Trump legal problem. Yes. yes. Well, I, I suspect that you have a human story to tell us as well, because I, I know that Caleb, yes. Caleb was demonized. He was, his life was threatened. He was assaulted at one point, physically, violently assaulted at one point. Yes. Um, what kind of personal trials has, has this brought you? Have you angered friends and relatives or anything like that? Shortly, shortly after I took on the matter, and I was on the TV station that I told you about, one of my oldest and dearest school friends, who is very influential in the Catholic Church, actually tackled me mm -hmm. at, her, at her family business, and with real tears in her eyes, asked me to please step off the case. Whoa. And to Whoa. not do it, because she felt that I was putting my soul in peril. Now, please, I don't laugh at this. She was very sincere. Mm -hmm. I understand that she really had, at that point in time, my best interest at heart. Yes. And so she was making a genuine plea. And I, I tried to explain to her that I didn't see it the way she did. Right. Um, and that I felt that this was something that had to do with what I thought were eminently Christian principles of human dignity mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and protection of, of vulnerable groups. Yeah. I think this is a general problem that people have mm -hmm. with, with lawyers. They, they don't understand that lawyers have to be true to the profession. So whether or not they, they, they think that, you know, the, the, this person that, that the lawyer is defending is wicked and is evil and this kind of thing. Well, lawyers no, lawyers have an have obligation to the law. Nobody ever asks anybody in Belize why, why you represent a murderer. Or if they do, <laughs> very rare. Right. Yeah. But the, the discussion around me representing me representing this matter became pretty open and, and pretty critical. Yes. Mainly because, as Hilary will tell you, I've been an activist in terms of women, children, indigenous people. Since I got out of university, I co-wrote the first domestic violence act in Belize because there wasn't one. Right, so that's right, from the 90s. We, there wasn't one. We yeah. co-wrote it. And we got it passed. We got 90% of what we wanted passed. This was a small group of women who felt that things could just not go on the way they were. Yes. Since 1990, I have tried to change the definition of rape in this country to be gender and object neutral. Not right, right. You can only be raped in Belize if somebody take them penis and forcibly put it into a vagina. Well, we have yeah. had a similar Same. experience in Jamaica. In Jamaica, we are trying to get a gender neutral, object neutral legislation passed. So you understand, um, and I actually wrote yeah. such a model legislation yes. for the community government in 1990, and there it has languished for want of attention. Yes. Passive administrations. Yes. I've represented my government on status of children um, matters in Geneva. I yes. have taken the government to court in defense of indigenous people for mm -hmm. Malaysian logging licenses. Mm -hmm. I did the precursor work that led up to complaints to the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights for, by the indigenous Maya people in Belize. Right, to lead a district. Correct. Mm -hmm. I have a track record on this. In fact, the only time I have not been an activist on, on any of these, were the seven or eight years I was in Washington. And right. then 
and then the seven months that I was foreign minister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other than mm -hmm. that, I have had a track record of activism on what I consider to be eminently human rights yes. and for vulnerable groups yes. in Belize. Was there ever a point when you felt afraid for your safety? No. And that might sound arrogant, but no. <laughs> I, I think if I thought about it, I would be paralyzed, and I'm not much on, on the being paralyzed thing. Yes. I, one of my favorite things is called the Litany Against Fear. Mm -hmm. And it's an old sci fi thing, Dune, where it says, I, I will, basically, it says, I will face my fear. Okay. And I will let it pass through me, and when it is gone, only I will remain. Yeah. You cannot allow your fear. We all feel fear. You cannot allow it to paralyze you. And how was the. That the, the, the psychology of um, advocating for this particular case. How was it on you? What was there media frenzy each day? Did, did people come out to pray at the court? Oh, this kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, man, take us through it. Belizeans, Belizeans are a bit more phlegmatic, I think. <laughs> yes. We will protest and then we will go home to have our lunch. Okay, yeah. Jamaican people. <laughs> Uh -huh. let's, be, let's be straight about that. No, in fact, um, you know, in the months leading up to this, it, it has ratcheted up. Yes. I've gotten death threats. I've gotten offers to be raped straight. Woo! I've gotten um, all kinds of nasty messages and notes by whatever means, text message, telephone message, um, message sent through so-called friends, um, private message, face, Facebook, Facebook messages. Mm -hmm. And we continue to document all of those, but yes. all of that. And quite a few of these persons are Christians, are, are, are claiming I, to be God-fearing people. I can't say. I really can't, and I don't want to say because I think okay. it's un unfair to characterize. All right, I'll say. However, I would be surprised if these were God-fearing people. Well, however, I am told that Belize is a Christian country. Mm -hmm. Do not get that wrong. Okay. And that when the Constitution speaks of supremacy of God in the preamble, ignore the comma that appears after God, uh -huh. insert instead a period, yes. and <laughs> assume that that God is the Christian God. Yes. According but, to the cosmology uh -huh. of certain Christians, too. Okay. If you start pressing them, on whose Christian God it is, then you will see warfare. But if I could, but, 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 but Lisa, if, are you saying that, that the God, the reference to God, and I won't detain you on this for long, but the reference to God in the Belize Constitution mm -hmm. is not the Christian God? No, it doesn't, it doesn't specify any God. But, but, it do, but it doesn't speak in the plural either, does it? No. Um, so, it hold on, hold on. Stay yes. Up. What it says is it is an entire paragraph that right. frames, in fact, the preamble of Belize is pretty unique in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I would argue that it places the skeleton upon which the flesh muscle organs right. that are the rest of the constitution are hung. Why do right. I say that? Yes. Hanged, okay. hanged as my English teacher would say. Let okay. me hear you know. Hanged. <laughs> what happens is that the Constitution has this lovely preamble, and it says at the very beginning, "We, the people of Belize, affirm, uh -huh. affirm that we, that our nation is founded upon the belief that of the supremacy of God, uh -huh. comma, fundamental rights and freedoms." Right. And it goes on to speak about the family and the rights of human beings and the rule of law, and it finishes up. The first paragraph, thusly, and that mm -hmm. all, all people have inalienable rights granted to them by their creator. Right. Not the creator, their creator. Ah, uh, okay. okay. I, would, people, <laughs> I would push back on you on that, but I won't. You, yeah, you can't, because we will allow you. <laughs> Christopher, Christopher, yes. Hammer Smith, Christopher Hammer Smith explained it thusly in court. You cannot arrogate onto yourself the, the right to is assign your God into that slot. Okay. Why not? 
because that slot is really eminently about human dignity and human rights. And therefore, whatever your view of your creator is, even if you think your creator is science, that's what it is. And all that that section does is to imbue the entire constitution with the mantle of human dignity and the knowledge that we as human beings all have rights that cannot be taken away from us, no matter what. There are other constitutions in the Caribbean that do have that sort of preamble. No. I mean. However, the Belizean constitution goes on to say at paragraph E, and we desire that our constitution reflect these principles, making it operative. Really? And Jose Conte has ruled in, I believe it was one of the Maya land rights cases, that two things, the constitution of Belize is autochthonous, yes. an expensive word meaning so we write it, mm -hmm. yes. and he has also ruled that, the, that under the basic doctrine principle, the preamble has meaning. It's not just palabras, it's not just words. Yes, yes, it's yes, yes. 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 So, therefore, we said that eminently this case, section 53, is a human dignity issue. Yeah. Yes. One. Yeah? Yes. And two, it also raises the issue of right to privacy. Yes. It raises the issue of equality before the law. Yes. It raises the issue of right to conscience. You'll be happy to hear, Hilaire, that in Belize, the right to conscience expressly includes a right not to have a religion. Mm -hmm. it's pretty wide and pretty cross-cutting. I mean, not to boast, you know, but let's be real. The Constitution of Belize was passed in 1981. Right. One of the last Caribbean constitutions. With that sunset clause and the savings clause. Five years. Five but it years. Was cutting edge. We mm -hmm. have a limited, a limited limitation clause. So that's a progressive constitution, if there ever was progressive. one. Progressive is one of the most progressive in the Caribbean. Which is why, true. for instance, on the C.J. Conte, I believe Belize became a leading light on litigation in the Caribbean because it was far-reaching, it was bold, right. it yes. was big-stepping, it was broader than Broadway, and why? <laughs> and why? Because of the magnificent piece of writing that it was. Can it yeah. be improved continually? We have had seven, I believe, constitutional changes in the 30 years. In the last six or seven years, the three of them have, have been. We had a constitutional reform commission in 2001, which incidentally included the proposal to, to include sexual orientation. Right, as yeah. a ground of discrimination. Along with sex. However, right. however, the powers at the other time did not believe that this was something that politically would be feasible. Yeah. Could I interject here, Lisa, yeah. for a second? So I think it was last week that the Belizean cabinet passed a revised gender policy, which states, yeah. and I'm going to read a, a small segment of it. Please do. The respect for diversity extends to persons of all ages who come from diverse races, cultures, ethnicities, faiths, sexual orientations, socioeconomic <gasps> situations, and behavioral lifestyles. No, give it that kind of revision. Yes. When, 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 when people in Belize uh, have, have seen this revision, in the making, you know. is it that enough? Can, can, can't you can't you advocate that we will be satisfied? No. No. Can't you back off? No. That's not a law. It's not a law. Well, yes, that, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it then? What uh -huh. is a gender policy? What, what what exactly is this gender it, policy? It is it is a memorandum of understanding. It's an expression of intent. Oh, right, but oh, it doesn't go any further than it's that, saying, Clyde. It's saying, Clyde, this is where we want to go. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's not saying this is where we reach. Yes. Yes. We want to go there. Yes. And what does Unibam think about this revision? We actually, as Unibam, because I speak now as the Unibam's legal counsel, Unibam has been a part of the negotiations to get this done now yes. for about some five years. Okay. Mm. Unibam has been one of the civil society groups and is by no means the only one. Part of the civil society groups and um, part of the wider Belizean society that was consulted to create this. Yes. I am reliably informed that 
faith-based groups were and have been invited to these consultations. I cannot and do not speak to why their point of view was or was not taken on board. Yes, so but and they're, and they're kicking up a bit of a fuss about that, aren't they, Lisa? They're kicking up a huge fuss. Yes. <laughs> and demanded to see the Prime Minister. Yes. Um, I imagine called, well, here I am speculating, but there you go. I imagine must have called for heads to roll. Mm -hmm. But we're told by the Prime Minister that this has been a very wide and consultative process. And while he sympathizes and agrees with the point of view that the churches are a valuable partner in civil society, mm -hmm. this isn't going to be held up or detained or rolled back or changed because mm -hmm. of that. But Lisa, if I can ask you this, I mean, the, 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 the orientation stays in the policy, right? But the configuration of the of that policy seems to be at odds with Section fifty three of the Criminal Code. So yes. w w why not just so simply people, people why not why not just simply just just amend it? I mean, wouldn't that be more a, a, a greater no, statement of policy? No, it would not. And let me tell you why. Okay. Let's go to Section fifty three directly. Yes. Section 53 makes it a crime for any person to have sex against the order of nature right. with any other person or animal. Yes. The state has informed us in this particular Orozco and the Attorney General case yes. that that does not only include anal sex, it also includes oral sex. Oh, really? It applies, don't, don't faint yet, <laughs> and it applies to both hetero and homosexuals. Oh, so that includes lesbians as well? Everybody. Lisa, if, oh, if I may ask okay. at this point. No, you know, I, I'm sure a, a, a lot of these church folk kind of think this is some kind of rational position. How exactly would something that is the police? This is the point. Only and police this, oral sex. Not, not just that, Clive. This is the point. But the privacy issue, the privacy aspect of this, yes. is this argument. The Constitution guarantees you a right to privacy. Yes. Okay. Guarantee. What could be more private than your private sex life with a consenting adult? Mm -hmm. Indeed. Did you know that in 1889, under the first version of Belize's criminal code, the criminal code which then applied to the colony that was British Honduras, and it was specifically a part of the British Honduras laws in 1889, this self-same crime of unnatural crime had the words by force, by force or without yes. consent. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Had those words. So, why, so those words were removed? 1924, when the law was reformed, it was removed. Okay. And that, and that, of course, completely alters the meaning. In 1944, when it was again revised, it was again left out. Mm -hmm. And in 1981, when we took independence, the 1944 code substantially remained with some changes, but again, mm -hmm. did not include those words. Mm. And because... Because we have a gender-specific, vagina-penis-specific definition of rape. This is the only section under which forcible sodomy of man, woman, girl, or boy can mm -hmm. be charged. Mm -hmm. uh, it is also the only section under which bestiality or yes. zoophilia can be yes. charged. Oh boy, talk about a rolled up clause, man. <laughs> man it covers. And this is why it is not an anti buggery law. Yes. It is really an anti anal and oral sex law. Yes. That, that, I mean, that is what it really yes, fundamentally really, comes yes. down to. That, that is really uh, what, what is at stake. This is what it is. Jacob. But, but, but Lisa, so it seems Hiller, to me. So, Hiller, yes. to answer your question. No, having a gender policy which talks about sexual orientation will not do anything about this because this law does not only uh -huh. apply to homosexuals. The issue is, and why Caleb was complaining, is that overwhelmingly a man who has sex with another man yes. is much more vulnerable 
mm -hmm. being what is called an unapprehended felon under this law. Correct. Because of the way that man would live his private sexual life. Yes. Yes. Because if, yes. The, if, the, if the issue of consent between adults is taken out of the equation, then everyone who has that form of sex is an unapprehended felon. All right. But, but, but then everybody is potentially an unapprehended I am felon. going to say it again. <laughs> yes. Very slowly. Yes. Christian married people. <laughs> Yes. Christian married people. Yes. So hold yes. on a minute. So what, 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 so what we're saying that anything outside of 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 of, of penis to vagina intercourse yes. is basically legal in Belize. Say that again, mostly. Sorry. So basically, um, anything outside penis to vagina intercourse. Uh -huh. is illegal or unnatural. Illegal. You say legal a minute ago, you know. Mine. Illegal. <laughs> illegal. 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 Legal. Not right. legal. In illegal. In okay. illegal. Yes. So, no, so, or better yet, switch it around. Yes. Only penis to vagina intercourse is legal. Legal in Belize. Is legal in okay. Belize. Okay. Because okay. The state conceded in its written submissions and its oral no pun intended, arguments before the court. Yes. <laughs> but, but eminently oral sex is a part of the unnatural crime equation. And has, anybody ever, has, has anybody ever been arrested for oral sex in Belize? Not that I know of. But I don't like this formulation that let's leave it on the books because nobody now use it. Me neither. I'm not down with that at all. Let me tell you why, Clive. <laughs> There have been complaints, genuine complaints. I have clients who have complained to me that they will roll up to a hotel with a companion uh -huh. of the same sex. These are men now. Yeah. Man right. will roll up to a hotel with a man. Check in. Go to the hotel room. And boy, after some considerable period of time and intimacies are occurring, police will come and knock on the door. Yeah. And the knock will say, open this door before we break it down. And then the request will come for forget money. Or, right. um, you know, Extortion. would you rather pay a fine here and now or yes. have to take you down to the station and book you for Section 53? Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. We, we have similar experiences in Jamaica. Right, yeah. Because use of the law as a, as a, as a, use of the law as an instrument of persecution. People don't have to say, Gentlemen, we have a, like you in Jamaica, have a good, a really good tourism product. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding increasingly is anecdotal reportage that this is happening in, in the tourist areas in Belize. And these oh, people are never okay. going to report it to the authorities. No, hardly, hardly, hardly. Hello. They're not supposed to be here under our immigration law. Right, explain oh. that to our viewers, uh, ben, um, Lisa, the immigration the law. The immigration law of Belize, which is a colonial holdover, says that um, the following persons are, are prohibited immigrants mm -hmm. in the country, meaning you cannot come as a visitor neither. Right. Prostitutes, and how will they determine this? Ah, hold on. Prostitutes, their pimps, homosexuals, Deaf people, dumb people, and idiots. Mm. Oh, oh right. Whoa. Yeah, idiots, whoa. man. Idiots are still uh, on, on the books. <laughs> That's idiot. a good one. In Trinidad and Tobago as well. <laughs> idiot in Belize is not a generic idiot, you know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> mental <laughs> defective. It's a term of art meaning mental defective. What a rat <laughs> Sorry, but, but apparently many mental defectives have escaped the net of the law. Yes, clearly. Howsomever, that is no excuse for having that law on the books either. Yes. You know? No, it absolutely it, is oh, not. So here is here is the crux of the matter. That Mr. Orozco had loco standi, had the right to go to court, had the standing to go to court, had the complaint to go to court, because he is saying, This is who I am. I am a homosexual man. I have yes. sex with other men. I am intimate with other men. I carry mm -hmm. on my lifestyle in such a way that I am likely to be affected by Section 53. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is all he needed to show the court. 
we also, mm -hmm. we also, because we knew the complaint, we also got an order from the court. Sorry, we also got an, yeah, an order from the court mm -hmm. appointing an expert who gave expert evidence on the number of arrests for Section 53. Yes. Who was, who was arrested and how. And the expert also interviewed an assistant commissioner of police who admitted, yeah, we don't go knocking down doors to find Section 53 violators, but if you are arrested in the course of committing another crime, or we are investigating and we find you, we're going to cart you off. Uh huh. Uh huh. So that works. Okay. 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 So, so in other words, nobody has to nobody has to declare it at I guess immigration that I'm gay or something like that. No, but if the immigration officer asks you, "Are you homosexual?" What do you? Yes. Is that a standard question? No, not that I know of. Okay. But I'm saying it could be asked. It could be because the law the law says that they shouldn't be admitted. So. You see. So yeah. But Lisa, if, if you could, um, because we don't want to detain you too long, no, no, I mean, that's fine. I'm doing could, you, could you kind of give us a kind of chronology of the litigation? Um, I mean, the, the, I know there was a first right. phase. So, so I was, I was at yeah. the scene at which both parties have now joined the churches. Right. Have, um, Human Dignity Trust and that pro joined first, and the church, churches joined afterwards. Right. And then the churches began to take on the role of the um, defendant. Right. They actually oh, began God. to take on the government's role. The government wasn't doing anything about this. The government was fairly inert. Yes. This is the general's representative. Their attorney, the deputy solicitor general, was turning up to court doing, you know, case management orders and things, but mm -hmm. he wasn't actively litigating. Right. The parties took on the role of defenders and they sought mm -hmm. and got an order to strike out Unibam. Right, on I recall. The basis, in an interim hearing on the basis that Unibam was an organization and therefore did not have, believe it or not, did not have sex and had no rights to defend. Oh, <laughs> so, so, so not even <laughs> representative quite, capacity. Quite my elegant and eloquent arguments. I know, sis. I that, know, Lisa. It was. <laughs> despite my argument that, in fact, Unibam was acting in a, in a capacity as representative of a group of people who do. Yes. The court did not accept that. Yeah. And the court um, also made some pronouncements about this being a Christian country, which was very strange. Anyway, um, so it went back and forth. What finally ended up happening is they maneuvered to strike out our witnesses. We maneuvered to strike out theirs. I managed to strike out one of their witness statements, which mm. was quoting Sodom Gomorrah and the <laughs> Sodom Gomorrah. Face palm, face palm, face palm. Whoa. No, I, Whoa. I'm not even laughing about it. It was oh. so and, and, and this 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 is this is a statement submitted inside the courtroom? By by the publisher of one of the oldest newspapers in Belize. Oh my god. Amanda La? Also, no. Okay. Who is also the current ambassador to the Vatican? Uh, oh. oh, gentleman by the name of Mr. Harry Lawrence. He didn't file it in his in his ambassadorial capacity, oh, yeah. and I can't now remember if he was appointed ambassador before or after. But that's who he is, anyway. Mm. Lisa, do you have a do you have a light on the porch? I just about to ask. Yes, I do, and it's on, and you're not getting much of it. So, um, I'm gonna have to try to figure out how we do this without you losing me. If no, well, I, I mean, we, 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 we still it's see your, you. It's just your illumination, your little dark. Maybe going to try and see if perhaps if I move slightly. Yes, yes, yes. Go over to that I side, right? More, yeah. Yes. 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 A little better. Yes, we know we, we know you're bright, you know, Lisa, but you know, sometimes <laughs> you might need just Sorry, a little. All you're seeing is my forehead shining. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, actually, your forehead is shining at us. <laughs> Um, well, so, cool. so that's 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 basically where we are. See, mm -hmm. so yeah, so they maneuvered, and and what ended up happening is we ended up joining back Unibam in the very same capacity as the churches. Uh -huh. okay. And then when we went to litigation at the beginning of May, which turned out to be five days in court, and we used the full five days, four yes. days in court, we used the full four days. It ended up being 15, 15 16 lawyers. 
Wow. This was from May, May 27 to 30? No, it was from May... It was from May 7th to the... 7th, sorry. 7th to the 10th. Mm. Yeah. 7th to the 10th, sorry. Was it? Yes, hello. Yeah. I have a I have a comment slash question on uh, YouTube from Paul Schmidt. Okay. So Paul is saying people like Pastor Wade from Plus TV are you know kind of insinuating that the idea that allowing this law to be amended uh, would would open the gateway to pedophilia, bestiality, and a, a bunch of other things. I I have uh, also passed away. That gate has been open for a very long time. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so and yes. What you need to do is to figure out a way to change culture so that the gate closes. Ah. Yes. And join us because I have made him this offer since I was on his television show in 2009. Join us, meaning me and whoever else him want. Yes. You yeah. have to be Unibam to work towards amending the laws to protect particularly children, minors, and specifically boys right. mm -hmm. against crimes of sexual of any sexual nature, mm. not just sodomy. But, I mean, I, there have been so many instances where boys and girls in Belize are imperiled because of pedophiles. Yes. And I would wager to say there has been very little evidence, minimal, minimal um, evidence, that would tie any notion that the majority of these pedophiles are in fact same-sex pedophiles. Yes. In yes. fact, the vast majority of cases, the ones who don't get the press but happen far more often, are adult men. Yes. yes. And that is the case. That is the case across the board. Terrorizing little girls. Yes. That is the case. Statistically, that is the case across the board. It's normally straight yeah. adult men. But the ones that get press, the ones that get media, is where men have molested or raped boys. Right. Right. Those are the ones that get the media. Right. Well, according to Uganda, Minister of Ethics and Integrity, mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you, if, you, if, you take, if you sort of force yourself on, on females, that's natural. But the, yeah. um, <laughs> it's a, I saw the interview. Yes, with and Stephen Fry. There's a word in Spanish that says, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up when I hear it. Yeah, I know. I mean, the, some of these men are so idiotic. It's as, it's, it's as if they, they're not even having any kind of consideration for the kind of things that they say. No, I, you know what? I wouldn't use the word idiotic. Here's the scary part. He's dead serious. Oh, my goodness. That's the scary part. That's the... That's the part that in Spanish you call espeluznante. It yes. makes hair on the back of your neck. Yes, 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 yes. It yes. is so frightening. It yes. is frightening. And that this, this viewpoint is seriously taken on, not only by a government functionary, but by, but by an ordained minister. <laughs> right, he's a, he's, a, he's a Catholic priest, I think. You don't know what him be. But yes, he's a, he's a Catholic a religion, priest. In addition to being a minister of government. Of government, yes. Well, this is a case of what my mother would call mentacide. <laughs> you know, you know I, I think some people have a very bad propensity in the Caribbean for tech bad thing make joke. Mm. Belizeans are Olympians at laughing. Oh. Yes. At ourselves. Yeah. And yes. at the straightened circumstances we find ourselves in. Yes. It yes. Is, has been our safety valve. This is how we survive slavery. Yeah, but man. It also means, gentlemen, that once we've relief, released the tension by laughing at it, the tendency is to do nothing. Yes. Well, boy, you know, Lisa, can be dangerous. Uh, I would have to, I would have to, to, to entirely endorse what you say there because um, we've certainly, certainly in Jamaica, um, I've seen that sort of lassitude even among people who, who claim to be human rights defenders or who are interested in human rights issues. Mm -hmm. Because I think from my own experience of you... Not to cut you off, continue speaking. I'm going to move locations because you really can't see me. Okay, yeah. all, right. all right. All right. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. yeah, continue speaking. Yes, no, I think that we have that sort of, uh, that sort of approach um, in Jamaica. I mean, if indeed people do engage, um, but you're right. I mean, once you we kind of laugh and we've, we've cut, the, we've, we've reduced the tension. Then it's, it's it's back to, I guess, a kind of business as usual. Mm -hmm. And in fact, what I call, what I call, in, what I call the wafido mentality. Yes. Wafido yes. mentality. You and know, then so 
nothing ever happens about it. Nothing no. Nothing happens about it. Nothing can be done. Nothing no. can go on. Yes. So that, is, that is the end of that. Yes. Yeah. But, Lisa, but Lisa, are you encouraged? I mean, I know at, at start you on the on the track of the, the chronology, but just to detour a little bit, are you encouraged by the litigation that is going to be taking place in places like um, Jamaica, um, Javed Jaga is challenging. Listen to me. I, am, I am encouraged about the litigation that's taking place in Belize to start with. Yes, no, not to start with, but I mean... Hold on, hold on. Let me just hmm. say this. I think this, 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 this makes a perfect shot across the bow of the idea that yes. all we ever do is rail up and run up remote. Right. And we don't really do anything about anything. Yes. Correct. That old dance hall song about action, <laughs> not a bag of mouth. Right, right, right. That's what we're dealing with now. Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes, and yes. It's so, and and it's, it's not only in Belize, as you point out rightly. This uh -huh. is Guyana with the cross dressing. Guyana, mm -hmm. yes. This is Jamaica with the uh -huh. various bits of legislation. Right, because there's just one just concluded in Jamaica last this, week. This is, um, this is going to be ongoing in Trinidad, I understand. Uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I am expecting that Dominica, which is starting to pull up uh -huh. on their own thing, will eventually go the same way. Yeah. Yes. And I Another question from I the think for all of those people who are jumping up and down and say, why is foreign and foreign money and foreign movement? There's a BBC, not BBC, The Economist article, which talks about the American and foreign funders of the Christian fundamentalists who are upholding. Oh yeah, a lot of these guys come from Texas. The issue, not e not even just Texas. There's a whole slew of them, mm. and they are involved worldwide, from Uganda yeah. to Belize, oh, yeah. in Jamaica to, too, to mm. Jamaica, to wherever you like. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's that's number one. Number two is all of these laws are old colonial laws that were by and large imposed on us by our foreign colonial masters. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> Time for us to get our life. Number yes. Three, what I see what I see rising up very organically is a Caribbean wide movement of activism. Yes. Which I think in fact the result of this of this litigation, the result of things like there's a conference on, in UAE on Friday, which I will be attending in Jamaica, to discuss uh -huh. the litigation. It, and, it, and it brings together activists who have been working on similar cases throughout the Caribbean. Oh, and good. I promise you, I promise you, out of this will come a revolution mm -hmm. for human rights in the Caribbean. And maybe, maybe it starts with LGBT issues, but it doesn't stop there, gentlemen. Definitely, definitely. I have a question. I have a yes. Sure. I have a question for you, Lisa. Let me just finish up on this one. Okay, no problem. I've made the point to the people that I've been talking to. You got on this horse, you're going to ride it until everybody, including people with disabilities in Belize, have rights. Yes. You're going to ride it because Indeed. if you win your rights, you then have an obligation to make sure that other people have their rights. Indeed. And that is a serious issue because yes. too often, too often, everybody gets to be so navel yeah. gazing when yeah, it comes yeah, to yeah. rights. Yes. Everybody but thinks the boy me get mine, so that no, I so, can't. So yeah, so we are right. No, you know? we are right. We're not all right. And we I have a question on YouTube. Yes. So it's a question from the BCC group. Mm -hmm. um, that well-known group of 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 Belizeans, yes, and. Yes. Some known as bammers. <laughs> okay, oh. <laughs> the bammers. All right. So big up to the BCC group. I think I'm also a member of that group as well. And the question is, in what ways has the publicity for the challenge affected Belize overall? How, how do you think it has affected Belize overall? I think I think it's been interesting in that at least we are being perceived as a group of people who is not, who are now willing to talk about this. Yeah. And mm -hmm. do something about it and not simply hide it under the rug. Mm -hmm. I think, for instance, Belize got much worse publicity for destroying and using a Maya site. Oh, yes. A Maya temple. Right. Using it for road fail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is not that. Mm -hmm. This is a group of Belizeans who are standing up and saying, I want my equal rights. Yes. And the good side about it is that this is a government 
which has now just passed a pretty good gender policy. Mm -hmm. But additionally, too, this also has to do with the leader of the opposition having said publicly that he includes and supports diversity, and a prime minister who has said publicly that we have to allow people the right to have equality before the law. Right, right. Yes. Yes. Said yes. the churches have to be heard, mm -hmm. but he said that that cannot be at the expense of anybody's equality before the law. Yeah. Lisa, do you think, say for instance, imagine a situation where the main litigant in this case were Hillary and myself. Yes. We are heterosexual mm -hmm. married men. Yes. And we were Why the main litigants. I'm a shock to you, you know. I'm a, I'm a twice married heterosexual woman. Nobody believes it. But. Well, and, 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 and that's the thing. So, so if, if, it, if it was the yeah. case that, that heterosexual persons were the main litigants in this case, the, the, the LGBT issue would, would, would be, uh, you know, the, the, the main thing in, in, in the media. So if, if the litigants were heterosexual people, how do you think this might have been perceived yes. differently by the society at large? Why? I don't know, you know, I really cannot see. And here is the problem, or rather here is a dilemma for LGBT persons. Unlike being, say, black, um, you can't really tell an LGBT person more than so. Yes. There are some you can, yeah. and there, there are most you can't. You really don't know until you know, mm -hmm. until, unless they tell you. Yes. But the problem is that with an LGBT person immediately, their sex life becomes privy. privy. Yes. It becomes known. Sorry, their sex life is no longer a private issue. It becomes yes. known. And so, and so the whole ick factor, I, I'm sorry that I have to call it so, but that's what I call it. The ick factor comes into place. We, we as a people in the Caribbean are uncomfortable with sex. Yes. Oh, very. Oh, movies. very. Oh, very, 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 very insecure. We get sex. We're uncomfortable with tenderness. Yes. We're uncomfortable yeah. with love. You yeah. see a love scene, come on and boy, people start acting like it, they're my idiot. Yes, man, start to giggle and to... Uh, no, and yeah. and but make, make somebody get murdered on the floor and everybody no! is a circle. <laughs> it's a circle yes. around and everybody wants yes. to see. Yes, this man. Is, this is yes. what I'm saying to you. So this Traumatized is, humanity. This is where it comes <laughs> up, the ick factor, you know, and once you yeah. start talking about somebody's sex life, it's like, right. hey, oh, I don't want to... Yeah, yeah. I, I, because the reason why I ask that question is because... Mm -hmm. This isn't predominantly an LGBT issue. It's an issue about freedom of sexual expression, you know, consensual sexual expression. If, if I want to, 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 to have all the oral sex in the world with, with, with my wife or with her as a straight man, I should be able to, to enjoy that. It is a human dignity issue. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have the right as a human being to maintain my dignity intact and not have you interfere in the most intimate aspect of my privacy. That is my sex. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, As the Spanish goodness. would say, a fondo, at bottom, at base, no pun intended, yes. <laughs> where it is. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Any other questions from YouTube? We, we, we're going to wind up shortly. Lisa has been so kind to have been sitting with us. She has been very obliging and very, gracious. You know, and given, that, given that she wasn't feeling too well today, it's been a little bit over an hour now. So I'm going to ask her any final questions uh, from YouTube to ask her questions now. But Lisa, what do you think is your overall outlook for uh, the future, the, the, the months ahead, the years ahead? in terms of challenging litigations like this? Because I suspect that there's going to be a domino effect across the Caribbean. What is your overall outlook, your prognosis? I, I, I'm not bold enough to want to go beyond looking forward to what will happen at the end of July when we are supposed to get our decision. Yeah. And then looking at whether, in fact, we will then be required to take it to the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. and I expect it at all. Onto the CCJ if necessary. No, Hilary, it's interesting. We have to deal with the issue of whether the Attorney General does not appeal. What happens? Mm. Can the interested parties then appeal? Okay, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can tell you that if the CJ rules against Caleb Orozco and Unibam, it's going to be appealed. Right, right. right. I cannot say what will happen if the. Um, Fair enough. If, if we do prevail. See? Yeah. So, What's the climate at home now? I think P 
people, you know, it's interesting. Everybody has a friend, a relative, a family member who is gay. That is reality. For the yes. first time last week, I heard the leaders of the two major political parties yeah. acknowledge publicly and on media, on record, that they have members of their party who are homosexuals. Uh -huh. Serving members. It does not seem to be earth shattering to yeah. you. It's certainly historical in the context of. Oh, okay. wait, wait, so they've parted company with Bruce Golding's, Bruce Golding's brand of bigotry? Yeah. Both have said that they have mm. members who are homosexual and that they val value those yes. members. If you yes. go by statistics. And but that is leaps and bounds ahead of Jamaica. Well, if, they, if you. But, you know, Belize has never been homophobic in the way that Jamaica has been. Yeah. No, that's I true. Would argue, I would argue that we are a far more tolerant society. Yes, it would appear that way. We're a lot more laid back. Um, we don't quite have the population pressures that you do, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the vicious urbanization, although that too is changing. Right. That too is changing, and cultural influences do spread. Music right. has influence. Um, contact has influence. Mm -hmm. Brands have influence. Yes. So, but I am saying to you that everybody in Belize, when you break it down to what would you do if your kid was gay? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We yes. love our families. You think so? We go and kill with picnic? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Whereas we are wrenching people. Yeah. Wrench people. People almost seem to gag. <laughs> and then they deal, and yeah. then they deal, gentlemen. They deal, because yeah, we me not like Batman, mm -hmm. but yeah. we Batman though. Yes, <laughs> we, <laughs> we Jamaicans are a little bit different because <laughs> I, I know certainly I can recall certainly my own mother intervening in a case where a father took his uh, reputedly gay son, who was maybe a early teenager took him to school and announced to everybody within within hear, within earshot of his voice that his son was a Batman mm -hmm. and just left while his son was set upon. See, that, would, that, would, that would never happen in Belize. Or I, I yeah. shouldn't say that would never happen. I'd be shocked if that happened, and most mm -hmm. Americans would too, because around here, mm -hmm. the family is still sacred. The family mm -hmm. is still sacred. I mean, I have to tell you, just from my own personal life, People have told my 95-year-old grandmother terrible things. Yes. And you think my grandmother going to allow it? No, sir. No, no. My grandmother so. tell them straight in them face. Exactly. Her first grandchild does is no wrong. Yeah. Her yes. first grandchild have good, good sense. And if her first grandchild says so, I must say so. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. Is there, is there any part... Is there any part of the entire process that you'd like to, that, that if you could do it again, you'd change? Mm, I wish we had been a bit more accelerated, but that really wasn't um, a function of choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rather, it was and it wasn't. Some of it took very long because it, the Human Rights Trust and so on wanted to come on board, and the churches came on board. And then we entered an electoral period. Right. At that yeah. time... At that time, I must tell you, all stakeholders got together, including the churches, and, uh -huh. said, and said, no, we don't want this to be a part of the political discourse. Uh -huh. We're going to slow the train down. Okay. Yeah. And I'm actually glad we did that. So okay. from 2009 to hearing in 2013 sounds like very long, mm -hmm. but I think we also were able along the way to develop a community. Yes. So start to try to understand each other better. And so some of the hysteria that, well, roll that back. Not hysteria, <laughs> that is an unfair word. It's totally unfair. Some of the excitement and activism that I might have expected did actually not occur. Okay. Mm. I will tell you there were prayer meetings. I will tell you there was a general anointing of the area of the court. Yes. I oh, a little obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, however, there was no repeat of one time when a group tried to surround me on the street and pray for me. Really? I didn't know about I, that I one. I thanked them very kindly, but I said I didn't think it was necessary. Okay. Um, but I, I, did, I did ask the Chief Justice, uh, when we were doing the housekeeping <gasps> hearing, 
Mm. I did ask the Chief Justice for us not to have protests of any kind. Mm -hmm. And some of the young BCCers or some of the young Bamas were quite annoyed with me because they felt that they should go out there and make themselves known and heard. Yeah. And they yes. feel like I took away their right to freedom of expression. Oh, okay, I'm okay. genuinely concerned that there would be a clash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I think that was the right call to make. But I have to say, everybody behaved very, very, very politely to each other. Yes. I had no difficulty greeting Messrs. Wade and Sturm in court or otherwise. I tried to be as fair and as terminally polite as I mm -hmm. can be. Yes. But my brother will tell you that that is me. Uh, nowadays, as much as you can be. Years of of being of being educated into being a diplomat. Uh, yes, but that's true. Have to say, even the BCC, even the BCC crowd, even some of our most ardent activists were behaving with Christian fortitude, tolerance, and love towards mm -hmm. um, the parties on the other side. We're but, all human beings. You can you mm. cannot argue for human rights and then treat mm. people bad. Yeah, less than human rights. Lisa, right. Lisa, just to clarify one thing for viewers who are not familiar with the personalities in Belize, who are yeah, Messrs. Wade? Right back. Who are Messrs. Wade and Sturm? Oh, she she she'll be coming oh. right back. Right. Okay. So, so probably she went to answer the phone or something like that. But so yeah. far we've we, we've been. Oh, so oh, she's back. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Scott Wade, Scott Sturm, and Lewis Wade yes. are probably the most vocal activists in terms of the, the, um, the group of people who feel that LGBT is a choice, that it mm -hmm. is a lifestyle, yes. it is not a sexual orientation. Yes. Comments have been made, in fact, that pedophilia and zoophilia our orientations. Oh, right. Uh, I've seen that. I've seen of course, that. There is only one, one um, act academic who says this, and the academic makes the point that, in fact, um, homosexuality and heterosexuality are orientations come to that. So yeah. this, this thinker puts a very big umbrella on it. This thinker basically yeah. says, whether you're homosexual, heterosexual, pedophile, zoophile, right. still orientation, all of it. Yes, oh, I see. Yes. That is not the legal definition that is accepted. Right. That is his academic view. Yes. yes. And what what yes. kind of academic yes. is he? Is he a doctor or I psychologist? A I, he's a psychologist of some sort. He was cited in Canada where they've been having this debate. And he's not, as I understand it, a majoritarian view. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know of anybody who shares his view other than himself. Neither do I. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at, any do rate, I. Um, at any rate, um, Pastor Wade is, 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 is the owner of Plus Television. Mm -hmm. And he, he says he's a businessman and not not a pastor, although he's an ordained minister. Oh, yes, okay. And, and Scott Sturm is an ordained minister who has had a ministry who does a lot of very positive work with youth in the least, who is very respected for a lot of the youth ministry work that he does. Mm -hmm. But he does hold the view that this, the changing of this legislation is inviting Sodom and Gomorrah into, into Belize. Oh, yes. His, yeah, man. Yeah, man. He the slippery slide. He is also someone who has been in Belize for, he says, over 25 years. I have no reason to challenge him. He's an American, correct? But he's an American from Waco, Texas, originally. Okay, man. Of all the places. <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if he has Belizean citizenship or not. Mm -hmm. But that's neither here nor there. He's been here for 25 years. And I would certainly consider him a Belizean. Right. I'd even consider him a Jewelizean. Okay. And, and what it means is that he also has links to a group who are affiliated, affiliated with a belief called Dominionism. Yes, man. Okay. The religious right. And there are seven pillars. And there are seven pillars of power. Yes. And I think the founder of the Dominionist faith claims to raise people from the dead. 
No, I don't uh, hear that too. Oh, yes. I'm just putting a context. Yes, no, no, I understand. I'm trying to be scrupulously fair. I'm not saying that Pastor Sturm subscribes to all of this, mm -hmm. but these are his affiliations. Mm -hmm. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So what is on the horizon but for hold Lisa? On, but hold on. Mm -hmm. With one good authority, that the Council of Churches has made it very clear that neither Pastor Wade nor Pastor Sturm speak for the Council of Churches. Okay. Okay. And that's so important to know. They speak for their own particular groups and adherents. Okay. They speak for the church in Belize or the yeah. churches in Belize. So the, so the council so does. Interesting, mm. interesting, interesting that during the case we filed the pronouncements of the Vatican, which were put before the UN, on not criminalizing. Oh, um, yes, that's yes. right, that's right, that's right. Or not making criminalized homosexuals mm -hmm. or LGBT persons, yes. and we also we also put before the court the statements, various statements made by the Anglican Church. Although, of course, the the court also had cognizance of the recent statement put out by Anglicans. But as we know, the Anglican Communion is splintered. Yes. With the Caribbean and Africa being in one direction. Of course. And America, Europe. And um, and the UK being in another, I think Canada also being along with that group. Yeah. Yes. Is it the same with the Catholics? No, the Catholics are more uniform than that. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay. There's okay. the thing. Yes. Explica. Out to Hilaire. Talk to me. Out to Hilaire. Pope Francis has come out saying that atheists who do good works will go to heaven. Oh, yes, yeah. I saw the story, and then and then his and then his people then shut that down. Right. Never mind. He spoke. So I don't know. You know, I I will be going to heaven. Yeah. Uh, no matter to me either way. You cannot have it both ways. If the Pope is infallible, he's infallible. Well, hold on. He I thought he's not but is he infallible is like being pregnant. You can't be part in. Well, hold on a minute. But I thought he was infallible only on matters of faith. Is it? That's right. a matter of faith. And huh? when and when sitting and when, and when, when sitting. seated in Peter's chair, yes, <laughs> is that so? I don't speak on behalf of the Pope. <laughs> I know, I but know. But I will tell you, as as a political animal, and by political animal, I don't mean party political. I mean as hmm. a political animal who observes what's going on in the world. Yes, as someone who never stops analyzing what I see happening around me. I yes. think. I think that's the opening of a door. Okay. I see it as liberalization. Mm. Maybe they'll step on him and dial him back. I wait to see. But I, I certainly see it as, as a glimmer, a glimmer of light under the door, which okay. seems to me the door might just open. We'll no, what, you're far more optimistic than I am. <laughs> but <Yeah. and> <laughs> uh -huh. I'm, a, I'm a glass half full kind of person. Yeah. That's good, that's, that's good. That's a good thing too, because if I weren't, yeah. It would be really yeah. hard. To yes, but so am I. But you see, as I always say, in, in response to that, it all depends on what's in the glass. You see? <laughs> <laughs> so, Lisa, we're going to wrap up shortly. Something else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're going to wrap up shortly, Lisa. And I was just wondering, what is next on the horizon for Lisa Shulman? Because okay. I suspect that this case will come to an end one day. Uh, what, what do you think will be your next? There's no project. end of trouble for me to get into. Yeah. I'm still involved very much with indigenous people. Okay. Indigenous people. The Garifuna? No, no. The Maya. The Maya. Maya okay. And the Maya communities here are facing threat from oil companies which are now drilling in protected areas. That's right. Here we go again. Co managed by them. Right. It's, it's actually an issue on which I coincide. With my with my friend and colleague Audrey Matura Shepherd. Oh boy. Oceana. Oh and boy. She and I have been working on the issue. Yes. Um, as colleagues to 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 grapple with that. Okay. So, okay. Um, her her input as a person from Oceana will certainly be missed. But like me, I know that Audrey will be going nowhere. That she will mm. be remaining in Belize and that she mm. will continue to be a voice of activism. Yeah. Yes. I yes. welcome yes. it. I really, really welcome everybody and anybody who genuinely has an interest in improving the jewel. Good. Yes. Yes. Wow. 
Thank you so much, uh, Lisa. You've been so gracious to have you know accepted our invitation to come and to uh, skeptically speaking. And you know, I, I'm not going to call this a conclusion of the Belize issue. You know, uh, this this is part to any, any any can can play. We haven't spoken yes. to Caleb as yet. Exactly. Yes, it's and, a process. Um, it's oh, a I process. Say, I wanted to say the other thing where I'm now doing actually is mobilizing to get the laws changed with relation to the rape law. Yes. yes. So the, 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 crimes, the crimes section of the criminal code that de deals specifically with crimes against the person, sexual crimes in particular, because you can pimp a girl out of your house, but yeah. pimping a boy is not an offense. Uh -huh. wow. Yeah, man. <laughs> anyway. I this expected is... that. Yeah. I expected so that. The next, the next move is to mobilize on that. I think. You, you know, it, 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 all of it is caught up. If you're going to be protecting, we're going to be protecting. So that, that's what we're looking at. Thank yes, you yes. for having me on. I've enjoyed no it. No problem. And, and, right and, and we, we, were, we were loving having you on. Uh, so, you, and, you and Hillary really uh, untangled the, yes. the legal issues. For well, us, more the Lisa than me, boy. Yeah, more, more Lisa. Yeah, but uh, Hillary was instrumental in kind of straightening out some of the legal uh, quirks. Yeah. And um, you know, you know, we really reveal that there's a human side. You know, you've been through it. You know, you you've been circling a prayer warrior, circle of prayer or whatever they call that thing. Um, we you've been my own prayer warriors. That, oh, that's... same thing. Yes. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've been insulted. You've been, um, you know, people have said all kind of things to you, both on Facebook and you know, I, I'm guessing to your face One as well. thing my daddy teach me. Your back has to be broad if you're going to be in this business. Absolutely, good, good, absolutely. Good, good. Lisa, don't don't leave don't leave quite yet. Don't hang up yet. Um, I just wanted at this point, first of all, to thank you very much for coming on. I mean, I know it's been a challenge for you. Um, I mean, I know. Muchas gracias, mi hermanita. Eres muy amable. Um, I'm trying my Spanish there because Belize is a bilingual country. Eh, 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 así es, así es, así es. Estoy de acuerdo. But anyway, I also want to take this opportunity, not only to thank Lisa, but to just to, to share some information with viewers about upcoming um, programs on, on Saturday, um, June 8th at, uh, at 5.30 EST which in fact is 3.30 Belize time and midday British time, we will ha we'll be having our first all-female debate. Mm -hmm. um, and can I call the names of the... Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, okay well, uh, for, uh, for the debate on the, on the theist side, the believer side, where we, we would be having Evie Vernon, a Jamaican who's currently based in London, We'll also be having Paulina Mayer, a Jamaican based in Florida. And for the skeptic side, we will be having Angeline Jackson of Jamaica, and resident in Jamaica, and Danielle Thomas. From Jamaica for secular from Jamaica, Jamaica for secular. And the, the debate will be moderated by, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, <laughs> my cherished and beloved wife, Alison Irvin Sobers. Boy. So I am, I am <laughs> big, big thing what you know. Yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. So, yes, so, yes, yes. so again, this Saturday, June eighth, um, at five thirty uh, p.m. EST. Um, you can work out your own time zones from that, um, and we certainly will welcome we welcome seeing you. Um, I'd also like to give a little shout out for our brand new. Um, read online radio blog show Yeah, the Skeptics. We just launched our pilot episode yesterday, June 2, um, and I thought it went quite well. Um, oh, yes. and we and we are and we're now refining it so that right. that so our next show will be on June 9 at 12 30 p.m. EST. In fact, will be the general the schedule will be once every Sunday at 12.30 unless we otherwise notify. Right. The next program that we'll be having, um, the, the main topic will be building a secular co a Caribbean secular coalition. And our invited guests include Jonathan Bello from Dominica, um, Angeline Jackson of Jamaica, both of whom are active in the field 
um, trying to develop organizations and coalitions. And we will also have, for the second part of that discussion, we will have um, David Ince from Barbados and Joy Holloway Davila also from Barbados. Both of them are co-hosts of a podcast called Free Thinking Island. So please, folks, um, um, visit our website, which I will put in our in on uh, I will put in the comment section of skeptically speaking, so you can you can right. visit it, um, and please join. As well, us. If, if if you go to Google and you type in the word Yardy skeptics, it you'll, comes you'll, up. Probably, yeah, you'll get the shows. Go straight first. to that. In fact, do that. Yardy skeptics yeah. and it, and it will and come Google. up. And we're on iTunes now, so you can download our we pilot are now episode. On iTunes. That is definitely a collector's edition. If you listen all yes. the way to the end, you'll hear some of the bloopers um, that, that, that we made. You know, some of the, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, we, 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 we start the program at the end, and then we start our casual discussion. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, yeah, so, 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 so we're new to it. We're new to it. And um, but we have some quality shows lined up for you people, both on Skeptically Speaking and on Yard Skeptics. As you saw, the, you know, Lisa right. Schumann is the, 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 the ordinary typical guest. He's a high no, profile. This is high profile. <laughs> this, is what, this is what we call a, this is what this is what Clive calls a marquee guest. You're a yes. marquee guest. Right. You, you know, know. Yeah. um you know so, Lisa so. M. Schumann. You say I'm a get. You're a get. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're a get, man. You're a you're get. You're a get. You're a get. You're a catch. You're a um, everything in one. <laughs> yes. Oh, if me didn't need the head, Rob me, don't get it today. Oh, of definitely. Course. Yes, man. Yes, man. Yeah, man. Yes, man. It's really been fun. Okay, thank you great. Very much. Well, thank, thank you very much. much. Um, and and uh, I really appreciate this, Lisa. And uh, we'll, we'll certainly stay on top of this issue as far as we can. Right. Well, so on you. behalf of my host, Hilary Sobers, and our beautiful guest, Lisa Shoban, I'm Clive Forrester, signing out for this episode of Skeptically Speaking. Lisa Shoban, don't move. Um, Join us again uh, later in this week for the all-female bit. I'll be sending out the notices later tonight or early tomorrow, so everybody will be up to date. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry. And give the give the type. Give the moot. The moot. I forgot the to give moot. the moot. The moot for sorry. the bit. <laughs> be it resolved. Religion subjugates rather than liberates women. Yes. That is the mood for the debate, all female debate. All female, female debate. Moderator, female debaters. I will be in a little corner just fielding questions from YouTube. Right? The, Me the, too. The, the <laughs> intervention from the men will be absolutely minimal, almost, minimal. Moderated, almost non existent. <laughs> moderated, moderated by Dr. Alison Irving. Correct. Indeed, Correct. Indeed, Give her a full title. <laughs> indeed, it shall be. Thank you right. so much. Uh, no, 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 uh, no, no, you understand? No, no. You, 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 you no, started yes. it already. Then. Started I just it already, said my, my cherished and beloved wife. Yes. Away yes. with those things. Dr. Yes. Allison yes. Irvin Sobers. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Dr. Yes. Allison Irvin Sobers. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Exactly. Yes. That is amazing. Sorry, <laughs> sorry ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Beg pardon. Beg pardon. Oh, my goodness. Dr. Allison Irvin Sobers. I am chasing the panel. I am ch full. I'm chasing and correcting. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Thanks so much, Lisa. We're signing.